Hello and welcome to a special edition of the short vort on Parshas Noach. This edition is dedicated to Zeich and Nishmas, uh, my rav and my, my neighbor for the past four plus decades, Ramosha David, Ben, uh, Yitzhak Isaac, uh, Harav Yitzhak Isaac, Tendler, Zeich and Shadik Levracha. He was my neighbor in Muncie since we moved here nearly four decades ago. I just left from the Shiva house and I want to give a personal type of perspective, not so much a learning perspective, uh, but it could have been any of the recent partios could have fit to be uh, dedicated to the patira of Mosaic uh, Nishmas Rav Moshe David Tendler. This is his house behind him. Just to show you the short perspective, how you know we're just a few houses away, even less if you go the way the deer cross these days. Um, but he was our Rav. So I was closest in, in age to the youngest son, used to play basketball, occasionally got into other trouble. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, was in the master bedroom of Rav Tendler, not with him there, but as part of recreation as with a, a friend, yet at the same time, I had this awe for, for, for the Rav. And, you know, I, always, I was very reluctant to go and bother him because he was always busy. And, not, not to ask Shilas, and you know, obviously he's my father's rav. I was a little child when we, when we moved in here. Um, you know, I, I became bar mitzvah in his shul of community synagogue, and uh, he, the rabbi was always so eloquent in his speaking. Um, this is my my family's house, uh, so you can see how close it is to to Rav Tendler. Uh, I remember walking on the street and uh, you're just going to shul. You know, you'd, you'd greet the rav because you're going in the same place, but you know, I was especially close. Uh, you know, it was easier to talk to to the Rebbitson, which a little side story was that you know, f even a few years after she passed away, that uh, I used her as my my shidduch reference, and no one noticed for a few years until someone finally pointed out, didn't she pass away? But when you have a rub like this, you know, you take it for granted the knowledge they have. It's kind of like uh, I heard both of Reuven Feinstein. Um, and uh, Shaya, the son of Ramosha Feinstein Zatzal, and of Shai Shechter, talk about his father, uh, of Aaron Shechter, of Yeshiva Rabbeinu Yitzhak Ochanan, that, you know, to them, what did they have a normal childhood? They had a normal childhood. And Shai, Rav Shai thought that, uh, you know, everyone's father knew the answer to all, all the questions. Um, so that's fairly typical. Community synagogue was very prestigious back in the day and the rub would for shvuas he'd have standing room only with hundreds of people speaking down downstairs and coming to him speak for five hours straight um and one of those chusim being a child is uh it was the later years of Ramosha feinstein uh he came for for shvuas to visit for sukkahs to visit his his daughter and um you know he was already old then and we weren't supposed to shake his hands, but one of my brothers, my younger brother, did shake his hand once um, and I said, don't you wash that hand. Uh, you know, but he was clearly the, you know, I'm thinking this way, it's, it's Noach now that it's Tamim Im, Im Dorosov, that he, Rav Moshe Tendler lived in the door which had a Rav Moshe Feinstein and he passed, changed the generation where it was Moshe Tendler and, and now we have a new generation without uh, Rav Moshe Tendler. So these are the different generations going on. I didn't. I rarely asked him questions, but I did once come for a relationship issue uh, to, to get his opinion. And um, and as far as dating, that's what he'd do. In the last few years, he'd uh, you know if I when I'd see him, he'd go news. So what's going on? You know, and he'd want to know uh, if I'd met someone yet, if something was upcoming. And he was the Messiah condition for my my two brothers, and he was and for my uh, my father. Um, so we go a long way back. Um, that's just a little bit of a, a personal perspective, not so much, you know, what you'll hear in all the other places, but for someone who's been the neighbor for four, for four decades. So, uh, for those of you who are listening for the first time, I'm just going to do it in an addendum. This is an unusual, uh, type of short vort, but I hope you'll subscribe at Devarman2 at Yahoo or, uh, the YouTube Devar Mantu channel. There's WhatsApp, different ways of short board 5775 to contact me at Gmail. My name is Ephraim Levy. So I'd just like to firstly uh, correct or clarify um, the fact that when I mentioned as I was walking and talking at the same time, having just come from the Shiva house, um, I misspoke. And Shai is Schechter, the son of Rav Herschel Schechter, Shlita of Yeshiva University, and of course, Rav Feinstein, Shlita 
is the son of Rav Moshe Feinstein, uh, Tzadik Levracha. So I'd like to give a couple of, just a couple of takeaways of what I heard. And then an amazing story I just heard from the Shiva house, I'll share to you as I now recollect it a day later. Um, and that is that, you know, you know, one time I was walking with the Rav to a, uh, this is someone who was sick on Yantiv or Shabbos. And so I had a few times to talk to him and, and ask him about, you know, some of those things that I don't understand. You know, how do I understand, you know, when I have these questions? And he answered, yes, it's something like makasha starpanish, but it means basically Judaism, you're allowed to ask questions. Sometimes we uh, don't have the answer right away. Sometimes we find out later, but we still keep it on going on because eventually we'll know what, what the truth is. And um, as far as a few years ago, because the shul, which once had hundreds of people uh, for the shul's drashas of the rav, uh, in his later years, it had been, uh, much diminished, and there was actually time for me to uh, go over and speak to him, uh, I think probably 2017, 2018, and I asked him if there's any update on the famous tuna issue, if now are we permitted to rely on the OU for everything as opposed to Doug him and certain select other brands, and um, at that time he said that uh, the issue had not changed, but consult your local Orthodox rabbi for how, how you are holding, um, because I've heard that there may be things that are changing. Uh, and the, the, the final story is that um, at the Shiva, one of the sons was told the story they'd never heard about his father, and that is about someone who, there was a woman, she, uh, she had a miscarriage, I think it was she had twins, and she was uh, very depressed and upset. She didn't know she'd have children again. Um, and she went to Rob Tendler, and he consoled her, and he told her that she's gonna have a child, and a, a year later, she did have a child. I know who the child is. He's an adult now. Um, you know, so he's an amazing man, an amazing life. You cannot encapsulate it in the few minutes that I've uh, shared here. Hopefully his farm of his uh, wonderful Friday night uh, Parsha shears and, and other things will, will be published. Uh, they hope to do that, but it's, it's a lot of material. And so thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week and wonderful Shabbos.